Hi and welcome to 10.2 Transfer of Charge. In this lesson, students will be able to describe three different ways to transfer charge. And here are the three ways, friction, contact, and induction. Over the next few slides, I'll go over each one. Charging by friction, some atoms attract electrons more than other atoms. When two objects are rubbed together, electrons are transferred from one object's atoms to the other object's atoms. And the end result of charging by friction is always that the two objects are left with opposite charges. One is left with a positive charge and one is left with a negative charge. But how do you know which object will give off electrons and which one are gonna suck them up? We know this by looking at the triboelectric series. It's a list of materials in order of how readily they give away electrons. So if you're on the top of this list here, you're more likely to lose electrons. They don't care about their electrons. They'll just give them up. Uh, the higher you are on the list, the more you don't care about your electrons. You'll just give away your electrons. And then if you lose electrons, you have an overall positive charge because now you have more protons than electrons. As you go down the list, these will suck up any electrons they can. They're more likely to gain electrons. PVC, PVC pipe is, uh, it, it becomes very negative very easily if you rub it with rabbit fur or cloth. Um, and I use that PVC pipe in a lot of classroom demonstrations because it's easy to build up a charge. They suck up electrons and become more negative. So it says if an object A comes before object B on the list, object A gives electrons to object B. And object A becomes positive and object B becomes negative. So what does this look like? Uh, so here is our slide from yesterday. We had glass on the left and amber on the right. And then we rubbed these with silk. Rubbing them is charging by friction. So when you rub it with silk, the glass gives off an electron. Let's take a look. Does that match up with our tribal electric series? Here's glass, here's silk. Glass is more likely to lose electrons. And we saw that electron went to the silk. Now let's take a look, all right? The glass is left overall positive because there's three protons and two negatives. It lost an electron, the silk, only three protons, but there's four electrons, so the silk is negative. The glass loses electrons, becomes positive, the silk gains electrons. That's how charging by friction works. Take Pause the video, see if you can make sense of how this amber is going to work with the silks. Find it on the triboelectric series. What do you predict will happen in terms of the movement of electrons? Well, here's amber, and here is silk. Silk is higher on the series, so it's more likely to give its electron to amber. If silk loses an electron, the silk's going to become positive, and now the amber is the thing that becomes negative. It's different from the glass and silk situation. So here's, here comes the silk. And as we predicted, the silk is going to give up an electron to the amber, leaving the silk with a positive charge and the amber gains electrons, so it becomes negative. That is charging by friction. You always get one object becoming negatively charged and one object becoming positively charged. Let's talk about charging by contact or otherwise known as conduction. When two objects come in contact with each other, electrons are transferred. Electrons flow from higher concentration to lower concentration until they reach equilibrium. So it's all about trying to form an equilibrium. The charges basically all want to spread out as far away as they can from each other uh, in a state of equilibrium. So for contact, the two objects are left with the same charge. This is different from friction and induction, which we'll do next. This is the only one that we'll learn about that leaves the objects with the same charge. They'll either both be positive at the end of it or they'll both be negative. So here's a diagram. You can pause the video and take a look at it, showing how a negatively charged object can cause this electroscope to also become negatively charged. So at the end, they're both negative. Here's an example of we have a neutral metal sphere. 
you bring into it in contact with a positive object. This positive object is deficient in electrons. It's going to steal some electrons from that sphere. So the sphere lost electrons. It became positive. Even though this thing gained electrons, it's still positive. It didn't gain enough electrons to become neutralized, but it is less positive than before. There's less of a charge there because there's uh, less of a difference between the number of electrons and protons because you gained electrons. Those are cool. I like this one better. So this is a animated PowerPoint of what I do in the classroom. I have two, they used to be poster tubes. They're clear poster tubes. And this is just a model that I used. It is not, in no way a perfect model of what's happening, but I use it to show how the two objects are left with the same charge and how you're left with an equilibrium um, at the end of charging by contact. I also use it to show how the electrons are the things that move. In my poster tubes, the red protons are on the bottom. Those positive charges are not the things that are being transferred. It's only the electrons. And by the way, you could only move charge in increments of one electron. The smallest charge you can have is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. It's quantized that way. You can't have a charge that's smaller than that uh, until we do modern physics and we talk about quarks. But for this, uh, we're talking about just a very general model of what's happening so I can show you the movement. So here, would you call atom A positively charged or negatively charged? Remember the red proton, the red are protons and the blue are electrons. So overall, this has a charge of positive two. How about this object? I would say that's neutral. So when you bring them into contact with each other, when I do this in the classroom, I, I move one electron over here. It forms an equilibrium. Let's take a look. What is the charge of atom A? Atom A is still positively charged, but it only has positive one E now. It's not as positive as it was before, but it's still positive. And this neutral object became charged by contact and it is now positive. It was neutral, now it's positive. It was charged by contact, became positive. Can you do this with can you make something negative? Yes. So let's say you have, again, a neutral object, and we want to make it have a negative charge. We bring it into contact with something that has a negative charge. I see a negative charge of negative 2E, right? Because this is equilibrium, this is neutral, and I have two excess electrons here. So I'm going to transfer them. I bring it into contact. One electron gets transferred in this case and the neutral object became negatively charged. This object was originally negatively charged. It still is negatively charged, not as negative as before, but it's still negative. You're left with negative, negative. So charging by contact, you'll either have both objects be positive at the end or both objects be negative at the end. And you can only transfer in uh, equal increments of negative electrons. By the way, charging by contact is and or conduction is basically the same thing that happens when you're charging by lightning. So let's talk about grounding quickly. It says to understand charging by induction, we need to understand grounding. Grounding is the process of removing the excess charge on an object by means of transfer of electrons between it and another object of substantial size, like Earth. You're still trying to form an equilibrium between the two objects, but now one of the objects is huge compared to the other one, like Earth is huge compared to any of the classroom demonstrations I'm going to do, okay? So if you have excess electrons, if you have a negatively charged object in the classroom and I ground it, I give those excess electrons a path to the ground, they're going to leave the charged object and become neutralized. 
If I have a positively charged object, that means it's thirsty for electrons. And if I ground it, I give, I put a, a wire on it that's connected to the ground, I'm giving the electrons from the ground a path to the positively charged object, which will neutralize it. That's it, it me explaining it, but let me show you some demonstrations. So this one is just showing a GIF of an electroscope that's positive, positively charged. You touch the object and you can give that positively charged object um, enough electrons to become neutralized. The ground doesn't care. It has plenty of electrons to give away. Now, if you have a negatively charged object, you could touch it. And those negative electrons now have a place to go. The ground doesn't care. It could suck up all the electrons that you give it because there's, it's such a large object in compared to this electroscope. And again, you're just trying to form an equilibrium. Um, so since the earth is so large compared to our classroom electroscope, um, you can ground the object like that. And you know, I like my little golf ball animations here. So here, object A is a negatively charged classroom sized object and I'm going to ground it, the ground doesn't care. Look, it's basically still neutral. Like it, there's so many uh, charges in the ground as compared to our classroom object that we're just forming an equilibrium as best as we can. Same with if you have a positively charged object and you ground it, the ground doesn't care. It, it could give away one of its electrons and it's still basically a new, it is a neutral object still, the ground. So you have neutral, neutral, and you have equilibrium. That's grounding. So now that we understand grounding, we can talk about the last way to charge something, charging by induction. Induction occurs when two objects come close to each other but don't touch. So this is not charging by contact. When inducing with a negative rod, the electrons in the rod repel the electrons in the other object, polarizing the object. So you can just induce a charge and polarize it. By the way, polarize means there's two poles. It's like vaporize, I become, you become vapor, polarize. You now have two poles. You have a positive side and a negative side. So when inducing a charge, you could do like that. But we're gonna show if you ground this object now, the electrons leave and then you remove the ground and then you remove this thing that's messing with this. Well, this thing just left, the, the electrons left the object. And anytime the electrons leave a neutral object, you're left with a positive charge. So we have a positively charged object that was given this charge by induction from a negatively charged rod in this case. So that's why we say the two objects are left with opposite charges. One is positive and one is negative. Same as with friction. So here are the steps. You polarize the object, okay? Let's say like the sphere is the classroom and the metal rod, the negative rod is me walking into the classroom and I have really bad coffee breath. So all of the students are electrons in this case, and all of my students are gonna be repelled away and try to get as far away as they can from my very bad coffee breath. breath. The electrons are being repelled by the negative objects. So they're going to the back of the classroom. Then a door opens in the back of the classroom and all my students are like, yes, finally, we don't have to be in this smelly room with Mr. Nangle anymore. So they leave the classroom and then, and because I'm still here breathing, it was like, ah, uh, coffee breath, okay? So the door's open to the ground. Then you remove the ground first while I'm still in the room. They're not gonna come back in. These electrons aren't gonna come back in if my coffee breath is still here. If they're still being repelled away by the negative rod. So I have to, it's important, you have to remove the ground first so we're gonna shut that door to the back of the classroom by removing the ground. There's no path for the electrons to come back into the metal sphere now, okay? Uh, they're, they're down here, the students are in the hallway and the doors are shut and I'm just in the room with my coffee breath by myself. And then at that point you can remove the charged object 
And what is the overall effect? This neutral object lost electrons and became positive from a negatively charged object. So it is possible to give a, an object a positive charge from a negatively charged object if you have a, the capability to ground it. Then you could charge it by induction. Think about how this would work if it was a positively charged object instead. How would that work? If it's a positively charged object, then you would have the negatively charged over here and then over here. It's like if Mr. Nangle came into the classroom with pizza and then all the students, oh, Mr. Nangle, we want pizza. Give us the slice of pizza. Okay. And then the object becomes polarized, but now it's like flipped, right? And you ground the object and what's going to come in? All of the students from the hallway are going to smell the delicious pizza and now the electrons are going to go up into the classroom. This is opposite than the other one where we had a negative rod because now we have a positive rod that is attracting the electrons from the ground. Now electrons are building up inside of the sphere. There's more students in the classroom clamoring for the pizza, and now I have a, cl a crowded classroom. The classroom is packed with students. The sphere is packed with negative electrons. And then I shut the door, and I'm like, okay, everybody, you're getting all pizza. I brought pl plenty of pizza for, for everybody. Um, but then I leave. <laughs> so, so then the positive rod leaves. And I'm left with a classroom full of hungry students. The sphere is left with a bunch of excess electrons that it got from the ground before. Because, yeah, again, you're in contact with the ground. And this positive rod attracted the electrons from the ground. So this thing gained electrons, leaving the sphere with a negative charge from what? A positively charged object. So you're left with opposite charges again just like we were in the first instance, but now it's opposite. And just like we had for charging by friction, you're left with one thing is positive, one thing is negative at the end of the charging. So hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.